Hello, and welcome to a concept review video for CSCI 2824, Discrete Structures. Lately, we've been getting lots of questions about determining when to use weak or strong induction, which we'll cover here. First, let's go over when to use weak induction. We're going to cover a few characteristics of weak induction. Firstly, in weak induction, we rely upon one previous term. Because of this, we only need one base case. And in our inductive hypothesis, we'll specify that n equals k. One hint I have for you, math equations. Typically, when you see a mathematical equation, it's a good sign that you should think about using weak induction. So let's go over an example problem to see these characteristics in action. On your homework, you might have seen something like this. We'll notice that in this problem, we only used one base case, which fits with this characteristic up here. In our inductive hypothesis, we suppose that n equals k. That's right. And then we plugged k into the equation for n. Finally, in our inductive step, we said that this should hold for k plus 1. In order to use our inductive hypothesis, n equals k, we only need to rely upon one previous term. So all of the characteristics are met. Now, let's cover strong induction. In strong induction, we will rely upon multiple previous terms. Because of this, we're going to need multiple base cases. And in the inductive hypothesis, we're going to specify that n is less than or equal to k. This means that we have a range of values instead of just one value. And one hint I have for you, recurrence. Typically, when you see a recurrence relation, it's a good sign that you should think about using strong induction. Again, let's go over an example problem. This problem is similar to one you might have seen on your homework. First, we note that there were multiple base cases. In the inductive hypothesis, we suppose that n was less than or equal to k, and then plugged k back into the equation for, yet, for n. In our inductive step, we said that this should hold for k plus 1, but we remember that k plus 1 relies on multiple previous terms. This is specified by the t of k minus 1, t of k minus 2, and t of k minus 3. Again, all of our characteristics are met. Hopefully this helps you understand how to better, how, when to use weak induction and strong induction when you're going about your inductive problems. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.